Hey there, this video is gonna be a setup guide and menu walkthrough for the Sony FX30, and this will be very similar to the FX3 because they work pretty much exactly the same. I do have to say that there is no right way to do any of this stuff. <laughs> so I just wanna share what I do, and it's always cool to watch these because you can sort of pick up some other ideas or ways to set up a camera. So anyways, I'll share how I use this, and hopefully it'll be helpful for you. So as we get started here, I did reinitialize the camera, and this is how it comes out of the box. So factory settings, so let's set this to English. Uh, I am not gonna deal with setting up the time here. Doesn't matter for right now. Now, one thing that's really nice about the, the new firmware in the FX3 and also in the FX30 here is that it prompts you to set the auto power off temp to high, and you definitely wanna do this. If you don't do this, your camera will overheat. There is a way to go in the camera and set up um, you know, independently of this screen here, or if you wanna change it later, but make sure you do set this up now and set it to high. Okay, register later. Okay, uh, ask you to do pixel mapping, which you should do, but I'm just gonna skip that for now. Okay, jumping into the camera here, I do wanna say there are several ways to shoot video on this camera, and I will cover a couple of them, but I, it, I'm again, I'm trying to show you how I would shoot this camera. So in terms of you know um, different picture profiles and stuff like that, I really recommend that you shoot an S-Log3, and there are a couple different ways you can do that on this camera. For people that are just sort of getting into the Sony ecosystem or maybe the or cinema cameras and shooting an S-Log3, I recommend that you shoot in flexible ISO mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first set up the camera in how I would do it in flexible ISO mode, and then I'll show you Cine EI mode at the end so you can see both of those, because I set up the buttons and stuff slightly differently. Okay, so first of all, one of the big differences with this camera is that it has the new, um, the main menu screen, which is great because you can pretty much access all of the settings that you need right here. And so I don't even really use the function menu anymore because everything is in here. So I'm not even gonna set that up. Okay, so if you take a look here, uh, there's a lot of settings and all of these can be found in other places in the camera, but generally I don't have to dive into the menus very much. That Everything's kind of right here. So let's start setting this up. So first thing here is gonna be the frame rate. So I set this to 24 frames a second. And the shutter you want to set to one over 50, which is double the frame rate. Now coming down here, I'll change the white balance. I never really use auto white balance. We'll just set it to sunny for now, but you should practice setting custom white balances or manual white balances. In terms of the picture profiles, um, if you're not shooting in S-Log3, you can set it to any picture profile you want. Like for example, a lot of people shoot with picture profile off, which is just the standard picture profile, or picture profile 11, which is s Cinetone, which is another great option if you don't wanna shoot in log, but we're gonna be shooting in log. So the first thing we should do is change the log setting mode. It's on the second screen on the main menu. So we go here to the log off and we can choose the different settings in here. So if we click on this, you'll see the options for flexible ISO, Cine EI quick, and Cine EI. I don't really recommend Cine EI quick. And as I said, we'll start with flexible ISO and then we'll talk about Cine EI a little bit later on in the video. So we select flexible ISO, you can see it's gonna shoot an S gamut 3.cine S log three, which is the same as shooting in Cine EI. It's the same uh, color gamut and gamma. And the last thing here is the embed LUT file. And this doesn't really change very much. It doesn't bake in the LUT into the image that's being recorded in the camera. Basically, it will put it in the metadata. So if you look in Catalyst Browse, you're handing the footage off to someone else, they'll see which LUT you were viewing the image with in the camera, but it doesn't change the image at all that's being recorded. So I just leave that on, it doesn't really matter. Okay, going back here to the first screen, you can see that the ISO has these bars, that means you're below the base. So we're gonna just set this to 800 because for most situations, you should shoot at the low base of 800. This here is where you select the LUT that you're displaying the image with on the screen. And so right now it's S709, which is Sony's, you know, just basic conversion LUT. If you leave it on S-Log3, it will just show you S-Log3. But I use S709. You can also add in custom LUTs, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Now coming down to the next screen, uh, the next row here, this is where you turn the LUT on and off. So again, this is just what, if it displays on the screen or not, so I leave it on. Now previously on other Sony cameras, you will be using the Gamma Display Assist, which if you want to use that, you have to like use it in log shooting mode off. So anyways, this is kind of how you turn it on and off here. Now, one thing to note is that this will uh, change the way that your camera reads the exposure. So um, <laughs> I I'll leave a link down below for how to shoot in Cine EI and all that stuff. I made a detailed video about that. So over here, you're going to choose your codec. There are a bunch of different options. There's the HS, 
which is a highly compressed codec. There is the S mode, which is a long op or IPv codec, and then you have the SI codec, which is an all intra codec. For the best possible quality, you want to shoot an SI because it will be easiest on your computer and also um, will be better for motion. Generally though, I had just been shooting in HS because for most of the stuff I'm doing, there's not a lot of action. I have a fast enough computer, which can handle it fine, and the file sizes are significantly smaller. And then if we go over here and we can choose what we're shooting in, um, I'm going to choose the 100 megabit up. Oh, you know what? This changed the frame rates. <laughs> Let's go back and change the frame rate. It does that sometimes. Uh, we're back to 24 frames a second. So if we go to the um, the different bit rates here, you want to choose the highest one, which is 100 megabits per second, and you definitely want to shoot in 422 10-bit. Super important. It just warns you. Okay, so now we have it set up properly. Again, you can use different codecs, like I said, but I kind of been shooting HS most of the time, and that's what I'm shooting on right right now as we're talking, or as I'm talking. Okay, so. What else do we have here? This is the wind noise reduction setting. You definitely turn this off. You don't want the camera doing any extra audio processing, so turn that off. You can see this is where you can access your audio record level, and so um, you can make this whatever you want. I don't know. Usually I have it around 17 or so, but it depends on the microphone and what you're shooting and all that sort of stuff. On to the second page here. As I said, this is how you change the log shooting mode. This is the how you format the card. This is, will change like which card you're recording to and stuff like that. This is the file settings. I definitely like to change this. And so what I'm gonna do is go to file name format and we're gonna change this to title. And this allows us to put a custom title in here. This is really cool because when you're importing footage from multiple cameras, every file will be labeled which camera it is. So that's great. So if we go to file name settings, I will change this to FX30. So. and then underscore. And if you had more than one FX30, you could do FX30A, FX30B, and so on. But what this does is that when you see the file name at the bottom there, every time you bring it to the computer, it'll say FX30 and then a file number. This is super helpful when you're bringing in footage from multiple cameras. Uh, really nice to have. Okay, what else do we have in here? This is how you change your uh, stabilization. So off, standard, and active. I usually just leave it on standard because that doesn't crop in at all in the standard mode. The autofocus modes, obviously, if you're using autofocus, you want it on continuous. This changes the focus area. I usually leave it on wide. This changes the face eye priority on and off. So if you're shooting people, make sure you turn that on. And this is the subject detection, so human, animal, or bird. So a few options there. So that kind of wraps up the main menu, and most of what I need to get to on a regular basis is in the main menu, but there's some other settings in the rest of the menu system that uh, I need to change that I don't have to access very often. I do want to say if you're finding value in this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, as I go through the menus here, I will go in order, and if I skip over anything, that means there's nothing to change or there's nothing I really need to talk about. So let's go, let's go through this. So if we go down to the first one here, which is the camera icon, and we go to, let's see here, S and Q settings. This is where you'll change your S and Q stuff, which is slow and quick. And so basically this allows you to shoot in different frame rates and the camera automatically converts it to your base frame rate. So you can do slow motion or time lapses here. So what you wanna set the base frame rate here to whatever you shoot in, so I shoot in 24 frames per second. And then the frame rate is how the camera is sampling the image. So. If you want to shoot 120 frames per second, you can set it up here. Now, if you want to do a time lapse, for example, you just set this to one frame per second and it'll sample one frame per second and then change it to 24 frames per second. So that's how you set up a time lapse as well. Lens compensation, uh, I'm skipping over some of the stuff. Like I said, I don't use proxies. The log settings, you know, we already talked about in the, in the main menu. For lens compensation, I always turn these on, and this is personal preference, but I want the camera to try to correct as much of the image as possible in the camera because it's a lot harder to do in post. The last thing here, which is grayed out, is the breathing compensation, which is one of my favorite features of the new Sony cameras. It's grayed out because I have the 16 to 35 F4 Zeiss lens on here, which isn't supported with focus breathing compensation, but I usually leave that on for everything unless there's some specific reason, like I don't want to crop and I'm manually focusing or something like that, but it is such a cool feature, you should probably leave that on. All right, so let's go down to the next stuff, and I'm going to 
going to be skipping over a lot of stuff, like I said, but I don't want to waste your time. Let's go down to number eight here and talk about image stabilization. So again, this is standard, like we talked about. We can change it from off to standard to active, which was, you know, you could get that from the, my, from the main menu as well. If you're using a manual focus lens, you do have to manually put in the focal length. So make sure you do that. But if you're using any of the autofocus, you know, lenses, it'll, it'll figure that out automatically and know what focal length you're at. Next, let's get on and talk about different kinds of zooms that are in this camera. So if we go to camera number nine, which is zoom, you can see that optical zoom is turned on. So what I wanna do is I wanna enable clear image zoom. And this is a really cool feature in Sony cameras that allows you to sort of crop in digitally instead of optically, and it does provide a really nice image. I made a detailed video about clear image zoom and crop mode and stuff, so I'll leave that video linked down below. But it does take away some of the autofocus features, but it's really handy to have, and it's operated now with the little, um, the rocker dial on the top of the camera, which is cool. You can also go here and change a lot of the settings. So if you're looking to do it while you're recording or something like that, you have a lot of options. Okay, next one is shooting display. I like this emphasize recording display on. I don't know if it comes default as on or not, but what this does is that when you hit record, it puts this big red box around and just make sure you know you're recording, especially when you're recording yourself, sometimes it's hard to see. Luckily the FX30 and the FX3 have tally lights all over the camera, which is nice, but it is one of those things that I like to leave on. All right, so now let's go down to exposure and number five. So D-Ridge optimizer is turned off or it's grayed out because we're shooting in S-Log3. Uh, even when I am not in S-Log, I will leave this off anyways. So that's why all this stuff is grayed out because we're shooting in flexible ISO and S-Log3. This is where you can select your LUT, which you can also do in the main menu, but this is where you import your custom LUTs. So it has to go into a very specific folder on your memory card. So put your memory card in your computer and this is the file structure that you need. So go to your card. The menus are private, Sony, Pro, and LUT. Yes, you have to put it in that LUT folder that's in all those subfolders. And for the LUT file that you use, make sure it's a cube file that's either, either a 17 or 33 point LUT. Once you import that in there, you can then select it to use it as a view assist LUT. And uh, it can be really handy, especially if you always use the same LUT, it allows you to see on the screen exactly what you're gonna get, so that's nice. All right, exposure number six is gonna be the zebra settings. Now for this, there is a zebra button on the back, so there's no reason to like have another button for that. But what I like to do is set up the zebra level ahead of time. And so when I do this, I the only time I use zebras is to use a gray card. You probably heard me talk about this on this channel plenty of times. And so for this, I'm gonna set this to either uh, 41% or 45%, depending on if you have the LUT turned on or off in S-Log3. So if you have the LUT turned off, you will set it to 41%, but generally I have the LUT on when I'm shooting, besides when I'm doing studio testing and stuff. So I leave it at 45% and I set this at plus or minus one to get it really, really accurate. So that's how you get proper exposure on a grade card in S-Log3 is 45% with the LUT on, 41% with the LUT off. Next, we're gonna start talking about some of the autofocus settings. So diving back into the menu here, we're gonna go to autofocus, manual focus, number one, and talk about the different settings that are in here. So as we said before, continuous or, or manual, we're gonna have it on continuous. Now these, there are a lot of different ways to set up the transition speed. And uh, I just generally set this at three and the subject's shift sensitivity at three. But depending on the lens you're shooting with, depending on the subjects you're shooting, you can really tweak all this stuff. But most of the time when I have autofocus, I'm filming myself or I'm you know, filming someone talking or something like that. So these work pretty well for me. There's also an autofocus assist mode to play with, but I'll leave that setting off for now. Next, let's go on to talking about the face eye autofocus, which is in the third menu here. And so basically if you're shooting people, as I said, leave face eye priority and autofocus on human. And what I wanna do here is make sure you turn this on, which is the face eye frame display. And this is what allows you to see what you're locked in on. If you don't have that on, it won't show the little box on you or on the person uh, that you're focusing on. So that's really nice to have. Focus assist tools. So this is where you turn focus mapping on and off. I made a video about focus mapping. I'll leave that link down below. I don't really use it very often. For focus peaking, this is something I do use and there's some personal preferences here. Basically, I set my peaking level to high and generally I'm shooting with red, although I do use yellow sometimes if I'm out doing wildlife and stuff, but again, it's just personal preference. And so you can turn peaking on and off with this button here, so there's no need to dive in here for that. Once you have it set up the way you want, you can just turn it on and off. All right, more settings here. We're gonna go down to the suitcase and we're gonna look at here number two. What's nice here is that you can save and load your settings. So if you have your camera set up 
uh, or if you want to transfer set, uh, you know, from one camera to another camera, you can do that. You can save the settings on the memory card, which is uh, super handy. Now, before I get to talk about the custom buttons and dials in this camera, I have to say that the way it's laid out is pretty good and there's not a lot that I change. And I really do love the fact that we have things labeled for video features and one of the reasons why you want an FX30 or an FX3. You have a button for peaking, you have a button for zebra, you have a button for white balance. So those are the kind of things I don't change, but I do change a couple of them. So let me show you how to do that. So if we go into the suitcase number three, operation customize, we're gonna go over here to the custom dial key uh, custom key dial settings, and you can do it for photo also, but I don't really use this for camera for photography. And you know, you can take photos on this camera, but I'm just gonna talk about video for this. So if you click on here, we're gonna go through and change a couple of these, one of which is gonna be the rear button number three, which is the center button here. And I changed that to changing my audio level, because sometimes I need to change that quickly on the fly, and I want it to be really accessible. So we go over here to the camera, and audio recording, audio record level. So now, when I hit this, the audio recording level pops up. It's easy to adjust. All right, next, let's go to the top. Now, these buttons are great. Like, I like that this is white balance. Um, you know, you can use the ISO. We'll change that later for Cine. I'll talk about that later. But one thing I don't, I, I wanna change here is number one, which is the button down here at the bottom, which is the iris, because I'm gonna be setting this dial to the iris or the aperture. So what I change this to is opening up the main menu because that's even faster than hitting the main menu button. I'm constantly going in and out of there, so that's what I'm gonna do. So where I find this is under operation customize and display main menu, this one here. So now it's really cool because if I hit this button down here, it just opens up the main menu, which is super nice because I'm always going in and out of there. And you can also use it to get out of the, that main menu. Now, a lot of the lenses that I use have the little button on the side of them, and I wanna program that because I like to use that for stuff. And so if we go into the menu here, this is going to be almost to the bottom, and you can see the lens button. It's set at focus hold, which I don't use that feature very often. So what actually changes this is turning the, you know, the face eye on and off, autofocus on and off. So if we go into face eye autofocus, we can turn this to face eye priority select. So now when I turn that on and off, it will turn off the face and eye autofocus. So if I'm shooting a person, I'll hit it on. If I'm shooting just a general scene or something like that, I'll just turn it off. So that's what I have that button set to. Now let's talk about some of the dials. And so what I like to do is the front dial, I will change that to shutter speed. So the front one is shutter. Number two is this one on the top here, or actually it's on the back, but it's the top for me right now. I change that to aperture. And this one on the back, I change to ISO. Now everyone likes this differently. I just, I guess from shooting on Canon for a long time, like that just was the, the way it was set up or made sense to me. So that's how I have it set up. So I just, <laughs> I just wanna make sure I set that. So I didn't really change that much, but that's how I like to set up my buttons and dials. Everything else is pretty good on this camera for me. And so let's go down to uh, different set for, um, settings for stills or movie. And so what I wanna do here is I just check all of them so that when I go back and forth between photo and video, nothing is carried over. I want those to be completely separate. This is a great feature because you don't wanna be shooting in log when you're in photo mode or vice versa. You wanna make sure your shutter speed is always one over 50 or double your frame rate you know, when you're in video, stuff like that. So that will keep everything separate. So that's really, really nice to have. Another thing I like to change here is this record with shutter option. And what this allows you to do when you turn this on is that when you press the shutter button, it will also record in addition to the actual record button on the top of the camera. I like to use both. For number five here and touch operation, I do leave the touch operation on because I like to touch for focus, but this swipe up, I just don't like it because I'll bump it by accident, so I just turn that off. But again, you know, it, it's personal preference. Going here to monitor, I change the monitor brightness to sunny weather. That'll make it the brightest possible because I'm always wanting it to be brighter, so make sure you turn that up. The other thing here is going to be the display quality. And so I wanna make sure I turn that up to high to get the best possible image uh, on the screen. And the monitor flip direction is cool. I leave it on auto, so that's like when you flip it over, it will reverse the image so you can see yourself while you're filming yourself. So I just leave that on auto, but you can change it to uh, whatever you want manually. 
Number nine is the power setting. This is where the th first thing that happened when you turn the camera on. So I make sure I have that set too high, otherwise it will overheat. But that's again, where you find that if you wanna change that. Next, let's talk about the sound options in here. And the one thing I do change is I generally turn the volume up a little bit. This is like the speaker volume. So if you're playing back a clip, you'll be able to hear it a little bit better. And you can change some of your four channel audio settings in here if you have the XLR handle on here or the XLR K3M. Now for audio signals, I just turn this off and what this does is every time you press a button or press record, it's gonna make a beep. I just find that to be obnoxious, but some people do like it. it. It lets them know that you're recording, but with all the lights on this camera, I don't feel like you need that on there. If you do like having a sound when you, when you hit the shutter for photo, you can turn that on here too, but I do turn that off. Next is the external output. And this one has one setting that I use often, it's the HDMI info display. So when you plug this camera into an external monitor or recorder and you have this turned on, the screen on the back of the camera will go black and you'll export onto the screen, uh, the external monitor, everything that was on the screen. So all the display features and everything like that, all the settings. Now, if you turn this off, then this will export a clean HDMI signal out to your external monitor and you'll still see everything on the screen. So it depends on what you're trying to do. I actually use this pretty often and I put it in the My Menu section because this takes too long to go find. So let me actually show you how to do that really quickly. So if we go to the top here and go to My Menu Settings, we can add an item. And this is a customizable menu that you can find. And so I went down to where I was before, suitcase number 12, HDMI info display. And then if you hit Enter to add it to My Menu 1, you can see how customizable this is. And, and hit Select again, it puts it in there. So now when you go to the main menu, you can see that it's in there. So it's just a little bit easier and quicker for me to find. Okay, only a couple more settings here. If we go under the setup options, the one thing I just wanna point out here is you can change your tally lights on and off, but the fan control, I always leave it on auto. I don't want this thing overheating. The fan is not that loud, so I just leave it uh, on auto. And if you do wanna do that pixel mapping, uh, you can do it right here too, if you didn't get to do that at the beginning. So those are my settings for shooting in flexible ISO. Now let's talk about CineEI. As I mentioned earlier, I don't recommend that if you're just getting into using this camera that you start using CineEI because it's even more inflexible and has you know more limitations, but it really forces this camera to shoot in one way. And I personally love it. I shoot in CineEI all the time, but it's not for everybody. And again, as I said, if you have questions about it, there's a video link down below. I'll answer all your questions about CineEI. I also don't recommend CineEI Quick because I generally don't change the exposure index off of the bases. So I usually am an inflexible ISO or CineEI. I don't really like CineEI Quick. Again, it's in that video if you wanna check that out. Okay, so to do this, we go into the main menu and we go down to the log shooting setting modes, which we were in before. So we change it from flexible ISO to Cine EI. And there you go, we're still in S Gamut 3.cine, S Log 3. You can get the same image out of the camera. So if you're not familiar with Cine EI, you know, when you're in Cine EI, you can't change the ISO whatsoever. And as I said, I really don't like changing the exposure index. I keep it at the bases. So you can change the exposure using you know, by changing the bases from low to high. So in the FX30, it's 800 and 2,500. In the FX3, it's 800 and 12,800. The other thing is I'm not gonna be changing the shutter speed because I'm always gonna keep that at double my frame rate. So if I'm shooting 24 frames a second, I'm at one over 50. If I'm shooting at 60 frames a second, I'm at one over 125, et cetera. So there are less things that you can change. So the only ways that I can actually change the exposure are just by changing the base ISO, changing the aperture of the lens, changing the ND, either adjusting the ND or you know taking it off or putting it on and then adjusting the lighting. So you have less things you can change, but it also just allows you to focus on the things that you need to focus on. Okay, so let me talk about how to change some of the things on the camera and show you how I use CineEI. So if we go back to the operation customize with the suitcase and change some of the buttons and dials here. So what I do here is on the top, the normal ISO button, which we're not gonna be changing the ISO, is I'm gonna change this to switch my bases. So if we hit this and we go to base ISO switch. And so what this allows me to do is that when I hit that button, I'll show you what this does, it toggles the base ISO on and off. So you see it switching from 800 to 2500 and it also keeps the exposure index properly there. Okay, so I because I'm not gonna change in the ISO, in CineEI, the ISO button changes the base ISO. It's easy for me to remember ISO, ISO, okay? So let's go back in here and I have a couple other things I wanna change. Now the other thing I like to change here is the dials. 
And so the front dial, which I did have shut to shutter speed, which I had before, is I'm actually gonna turn this off. So go to Operation Customize and Not Set. The reason for this is that I just wanna have as few variables as possible because as again, I'm not changing the shutter speed. I'm locked in at double the frame rate. So I just turn that off because I just tend to bump it every once in a while. I'm sure some of you guys do too and you've been shooting for a while and you're like, oh, I'm at the wrong shutter speed and you didn't even realize. And then the rear dial, and again, I don't change the ISO, but in when you're instant EI, the, if you change the ISO, it actually changes the exposure index. Again, I don't need to get into that too much here, but I turn this off as well because really the only thing I'm gonna be doing is changing it from the low base to the high base, and I'm gonna use that ISO button. Now you might be wondering, Josh, how do you change the frame rate and shutter speed and stuff if you can't change it with the dial? But again, I just pressed up that custom button in the front or on the top of the camera there to get into the main menu. I just changed, if I wanna be in 60 frames a second, I set this to 60, and then I just quickly go over here and change my shutter to one over 125. Again, it doesn't take very long and you have to go in there and change the frame rate anyways, the shutter speed's right there. So it just keeps it less stuff for me to think about. As I said, when you're shooting at Cine Eye, you can change the base, you can change the aperture, the ND, and the lighting. Anyways, a lot of information in this video and I just wanna show you how I use my camera. Hopefully there's some cool stuff that you picked up. As I said, if you are finding value in this video and you're enjoying it, please consider hitting subscribe. It means a whole bunch to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.